friends, level design is a big topic and I love it. For me, it's like creating a film and in VR, we call this creating an experience. I've heard your requests for environment design and to expand upon my scale video. Since level design helps plan for the environment, I thought we'd start there. It can be really tempting to skip the design process and go right into working on game mechanics. You can go ahead and start experimenting, which I highly encourage. However, if you want to complete a game, application, or even a demo for others to play, you've got to plan. Planning can be fun for those who like to think big picture and want to get clear on how to deliver a specific idea. It also saves you time in the long run. This is part one of a four part series about level design to prepare you for creating an environment for your application in VR. The first two parts will go into theory and planning, and in the last two, we'll start executing the plan, first outside and then inside Unity. At the end of each video, I'll give homework assignments in case you want to follow along and design your own level, and as a result, a VR environment. All right, let's get started. What is a level? First, don't confuse level with world. A world is defined by its visual art style or theme, and you can have multiple levels that use those same visuals. Level is a section of gameplay or chapter to the larger story that takes place in the world. In VR, we often say that we're creating worlds or world building. But since being an environment designer is a traditional role in the gaming industry, I tend to use the terms world and environment interchangeably. I sometimes even say space, meaning what space are you creating? This comes from a spiritual mindset because it speaks to the vibe or feel. The vibe or feel is established by a combination of the world and levels you create. Levels are often shown as maps, so we can see how the player moves through the experience. Maps are used in pre-production and planning, as well as placed visually in games to let the player know where they are, providing orientation. If we consider the Canvas system in Unity for UI, we use world space in VR. Maps aren't normally seen on screen space like a flat monitor, because it'd break immersion in VR. Instead, maps are creatively built into the world. The cell phone in Dance Central is a great example of this. It shows what songs to choose, your progress with characters, and different locations that contain different gameplay, like changing your wardrobe or practicing in the studio. Narrative-based games like Vanishing Grace use chapters to show progression. I'd like to take us back to the real world for a moment. We can learn about level design from real life too, one example being amusement parks like Disneyland. They're designed to move guests easily from one area to another effortlessly. Another example is in filmmaking, where there is a logical flow and series of events or scenes that move an audience through a story. Connect each level like it's a story to keep players engaged. Even if you don't have a narrative, your game will have a theme, which you can keep interesting by changing things like the time of day, weather, or objectives. Before we continue, I just want to mention for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be using game to refer to your project, whether it's literally a VR game or an application. When it comes to VR, not everything is a game, but since both borrow from game design, I'm going to stick to the term game to simplify rather than say game or application each time. When designing a level resulting in your environment, you want to do so in a modular way. What I mean by modular is that you'll take all the pieces required for your game and find ways to make them work together. These pieces are called assets. It's like putting a puzzle together that finally shows the whole picture of your game in a cohesive way. Assets is a term used not just for 3D models, but also 
sound, VFX, and UI. We'll focus on 3D models to get the environment built, but keep in mind these other items are also considered assets and important to the experience. Assets are often reusable and easy to move around. You can find asset packs that contain a variety of 3D models to make an environment like these. Cinti makes really nice ones for VR. This idea is often called kit bashing. The next step in my process is to sketch the level out on paper. Some people even use Legos. Once I've sketched the level, I gray box. Gray boxing means that I use Unity's primitive shapes to block out the level. It's like making a quick prototype of the environment. We do this before adding cool models like the Cinti packs because we don't want to get caught in the weeds. You want to quickly test your mechanics and levels feel before committing to placement of final models. When working on a project for a while, it's easy to get used to mistakes and placeholder art, and you'll want a more polished look. Grayboxing can help avoid this. In a later video, we'll talk more about grayboxing. I just want you familiar with the term. ProBuilder is a tool that Unity provides for free that you might want to use for this purpose. I tried this out for the first time when blocking a personal office. I wanted to see how different window placement would affect the feel of the space. Also, I wanted to test different color palettes. The wall has the same material for each, but the skybox changes the lighting a lot to make every option appear different. And yes, I realize I'm using some actual models here. The reason is that I'm working on art direction for a client and need to see the effects that various colors have on these specific objects. In this case, I'm even concerned about getting too used to this, so be careful with that and always gray box first. Leave me a note in the comments if you'd like me to make a video about ProBuilder. It's pretty cool and super hot was even made with it. That's an introduction to the terminology and concepts around level design and what we'll be focusing on in this series. We'll return to grayboxing and sketching a map for your game later because we still have planning to do. Before we create a map or user journey, we need to determine the level's goal, which points back to your game's purpose and what you intend people get out of your VR experience. In part two, we'll get clear on the player's goal and start thinking about what assets you'll need. The homework for part one is to determine the world art style, theme, and game's purpose or goal, as well as one or two main game mechanics that you want to explore for your app. Best of luck as you start planning, and I'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching.